So starting with this static image just here and using Photoshop and After Effects, I was able to create this animation just here. Now I admit it's pretty subtle, but in just a few moments, I'll show you how I created this. And if you wish to push it further, I'll show you how we can do that as well. So let's minimize that. And we are here in After Effects. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is build this animation in After Effects. But um, what I'm going to be doing is spending most of, the, uh, most of this video showing you how to build the Photoshop file for the displacement map that you will need. So uh, guys, we use two files to create this. This is our base image. And then this just here, which I've called displacementmap.psd, this is that Photoshop file I was referring to. This is what I'll be spending um, a lot of time showing you some cool techniques that you can use to actually build this with. So with that in mind, let's drag those two into After Effects. And let's create a composition. I'm just going to drag the face JPEG down to my timeline to create a composition. And let's throw the displacement map in here as well. Let's have a look at the information for these files. Uh, both of these files, face and displacement map, are exactly the same size. That way they'll line up nicely. And also please note just how big they are. These are over 5,000 pixels wide. You can of course create something much smaller. I'm deliberately just showing you that you can still create this effect with really nice large assets as well. Okay, so let's uh, zoom out just a touch just here. Okay, so we have displacement map down in our composition here. We will reference that for our effect, but of course we will visually never see this layer. So let's target face in our effect and presets section over here. Let's type in displacement map. There it is. Let's drag that on. And let's have a look at some of the settings for this inside of the effect controls panel. Now the displacement map effect is looking for a source for its displacement information. We will set that to be displacementmap.psd. And there's a horizontal displacement and a vertical displacement just in here. Now, guys, it doesn't really matter which channel we're using here because it's a, effectively a grayscale image. All the channels are the same. But let's just for a laugh set these to luminance. Again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's have a close look at the face just here. And horizontal displacement, I'm going to just drag this left and right. And check this out. That's amazing, guys. Look at that effect. Now, granted, if we push this a really long way, it starts to fall apart. But remember I said earlier, if you keep this subtle, it can look really fantastic. Uh, I can also drag the vertical displacement here as well. Very nice. So uh, it's also very easy to animate this. So let me just say, set these back to uh, zero. And we're at the start of the timeline just here. Let's click on the stopwatch to animate those two. Uh, if I press the U key on my keyboard, that opens up things which have our animation or has uh, keyframes applied to them. So you can see those just down there. Let's say move roughly down to two seconds. And then for horizontal displacement, I'll drag that up a little bit and the same for vertical. So you can see now if I was to scrub through the timeline, actually I'll drag it to the start and just tap my space bar to play through. There it is. We've got our animation for our 3D displacement effect going on very nicely. So there you go guys. So you can see that's pretty easy to set up. The most time consuming part is of course setting up the Photoshop file. So that's what I'd like to demonstrate for you just now. Now this is the displacement map that I used in that very example. And the overall logic here guys is you're trying to create something where the black areas are the areas that are most distance from most distant from the camera. And the white areas or the light gray areas are the ones closest to the camera, which is why for example, the tip of the nose and the eyebrows are the lightest part of this image, while the um, recesses of the eyes and the background are either black or a dark gray. So that's ultimately what we are trying to build. And you can see I've built that over a whole series of layers just here. So I've got my black background just here. I've got a big gray blob representing the face. I've built up the white layers through here. I've even got a little bit of black just in here to help darken up the eyes. And then I've got a hair layer just up here as well. Now there's no hard and fast rules here. All you're trying to do is ultimately create something which, like I said before, black is furthest and white is closest. And that's what you use in the displacement map effect. So lots of ways you can build this. Let me show you a simple way. I've seen people demo this using this very simple way. Now it works, which is totally great guys. If you're a beginner um, and this is all you want to do, that's great. 
But the method which I will show you after this one, I think is by far the most uh, non-destructive and also the most highly editable as well. So again, this is the simple method. This will work, but I'm not recommending it. So let's create a new layer and let's just fill that with black. So I'll press D on my keyboard for my default colors. Alter option on the delete key. Let's fill that with black. And we can drop the opacity of this layer down a little bit just so we can see the underlying layer below. So let's grab our paintbrush. Let's paint with white. And we don't have to use a particularly fuzzy brush. Guys, I'm just using my uh, left and right square bracket keys to increase and decrease my brush size and using those same keys in combination with the shift key to alter the hardness of the brush. You can also change that from this setting just up here. So size and hardness just there. So uh, let's see. So again, I'll see a lot of people that might do something like this. They'll say, okay. Oh, and another one, uh, guys there, you want to be using a very low opacity brush. So by default, the opacity comes in at 100%. But let's drop that down to 10% just for my example just here. So um, they might draw in uh, the oval for the head just in here like so. And then they're going to start to build up areas that are closer to the camera with more levels of white. So maybe let's fuzzy this up a little bit. And then you'll start to draw over the eyebrows, for example. And then draw over the nose. And then maybe a small pass over the lips just here. And let me just bring this layer's opacity up to 100% so you can see what's going on. There you go. It looks very odd indeed, I know, guys. But let me just uh, add a few more things just here. So again, this is extremely crude. You would obviously spend a little bit more time perfecting this. And then uh, one of the last steps you would do is to go up to, say, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then let's pop on an appropriate blur. That's looking pretty decent. So that's trying to get uh, rid of any, excuse me, any hard transitions. So that's our original image just there. And what we're trying to do is create something that matches the contours of that face. So again, guys, this would work if we just save this as a Photoshop, right, uh, Photoshop file right now and use that as our displacement map inside of After Effects, it would work great. Oh, and also guys, you don't have to uh, mush all the layers together. You'll notice this was the file that I actually used. Because I actually just used the Photoshop file, um, all the original layers were in there. So you could, of course, try the displacement effect inside of After Effects. If you didn't like the result, you could come back and tweak your Photoshop file. Okay, let's have a look at this one that I'm calling here smart.psd. Now, this is a dramatic overkill, guys. I have tons of things which I'd like to demonstrate here for you. But again, what I'm showing you here are what I consider to be really good non-destructive ways of building this, which can make it very easy to edit this file during or after you have applied that effect in After Effects. So let's apply a black base layer. So I'm just creating a new layer and filling that with black. So same thing we did before. And we would, of course, drop the opacity down a little bit so we can actually see what we're doing. So let's just keep that there. Okay, so um, tip number one, vector shapes. So if I go and grab my ellipse tool, I can go and set a fill color. Let's say choose something around mid gray. And I've got it set to shape, not path or pixels. And then if I just um, drag out here like so, there is a gray ellipse that has come out here. And you can see inside of the properties panel, um, I can go after the shape properties. And we also have some mask properties just here as well. So the beauty of drawing um, with vector shapes, guys, um, in this case, this vector shape here, is it's all highly editable after the fact. So if I wish to change the color, I can just double click on that and maybe choose a darker gray. Very nice. If I wish to make this um, fuzzy from the properties panel, not the first button, but the second button will get me access to the mask. I can go after the feather option and just start to increase that. So maybe that's going to work particularly well in this case just there. I could also transform that as well, just using a command or control T. I'll just demo that now. There we go, command or control T, and I could easily change that. Remembering this is all still vector guys, which is fantastic. And you can also change the opacity of this layer as well. So if you needed to blend that in a little bit, you can change the opacity just there. So again, this is a fantastic non-destructive method. So that was our first option just there, um, a vector shape. Okay, so I might leave that on and I might actually just turn the black layer all the way up. Um, another tip guys, you don't have to necessarily leave your original layer at the bottom. What you might even want to do is move it to the top or just make a duplicate. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and then move it to the very top. You could, for example, leave a copy at the very top here, drop its opacity down, and then turn that off and on as needed. You may find that an easier way to reference your base image, but I'll just delete that for now. Okay, 
I've got another one just up here, vector parts. So let's say you wanted to draw maybe like an eyebrow. So if I grab the pen tool and I'm drawing a shape just here, and let's fill that with say white. So I'll just draw a rough shape around here. Let's close that off just there. Now this is very similar to the um, shape which I drew a moment ago, guys, but um, you do get slightly different um, properties going on because it's not an actual live vector shape. So same rules apply though, guys. Um, I've drawn myself a vector path, which is showing up as a shape. I can still feather that thing. And I can change the opacity if I wish. And again, this is a vector item. So I could easily go and grab, say, my direct selection tool and then go and move the paths after the fact, come back and change the feather, whatever I like. Very nice. Okay, let's turn that off. Now this one just up here, painting. Um, this is going to be very similar to what I showed you in the previous example. Let me turn on a, excuse me, let's create a new layer just here. Grabbing my paintbrush, again, a nice low opacity. And I've actually got myself a rather soft edge brush. So we could actually draw, do some painting in here. So we could slowly build that up if we like. But um, another tip that I have for you is to actually, wherever possible, separate this out into as many layers as possible. So if I create another layer just in here, and maybe I use a smaller brush just in here. So you can see overall, this looks like um, one big thing, but let's say I feel that I've gone too hard on that inside painting. I can either turn that entire layer off or I could just drop its opacity down like so. So again, very similar to what we saw in the previous example. Okay, now I've also got up here an option here I've got called painting black. Now you don't necessarily need to do this, but if, for example, you need to do some very fine detail, you might find it easier to paint with black as opposed to trying to cover up what you painted with white. So for example, if I switch to black just here, I might actually use a very fine edge brush and come through here and start to do a little bit of painting with black. Guys, I'm gonna just jump back to my original displacement map for a second here, and I'm gonna zoom right in here. Just to remind you, that's exactly what I did. I've got this actual layer here called black, where I have done just that. I've actually painted in um, black because I wasn't quite happy with the depth I'd achieved by first painting with white. Okay, back here into our smart document just there. Um, I've got a section here called opacity. We've really already looked at it, guys. I just really wanted to emphasize it in this case here. So I'm just switching back to white. And again, if you've uh, got a few passes just here, um, you can come up and just change the opacity of the layer. Also not forgetting, you can uh, go after the opacity of the brush. So you could, um, I'll often paint maybe like only two or 3% sometimes if I'm trying to do some very fine work. Okay, let me uh, show you the next one, masking. Avoid, avoid erasing. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's, uh, let's create another layer and let's just do some, uh, crazy painting just down here. Now let's say we were trying to make um, some very fine changes to a very particular area. Let's say for example, I'll just drop, uh, jump to my selection tool just here. Let's say we're trying to cut out a little section just in here. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be using the eraser tool. So if I go and grab this guy here, the uh, eraser tool just here, um, it actually functions very similarly to the brush here guys. So you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be taking out chunks if you don't absolutely have to, because what I've actually done there is I've actually erased those pixels just there. Of course, this is destructive. If I wish to undo this later, I can't, I'd have to paint it in. It's a whole big pain in the butt. So let me undo that. What I would recommend you do is actually you mask that area. So at the bottom of your layers panel, let's apply a mask. And the way of course a mask works is wherever it's white, you will see that layer. Wherever it's black, you won't. Shades of gray in between will show transparency. So if I now, with my mask targeted, paint with black, I could actually, let's try that again. Oop, I'm using my eraser tool. Let's switch over to my brush tool. That was my problem just there. Let's increase the opacity and fantastic. So now it's taking out that chunk in that same spot there, guys. But of course I've done so non-destructively. I've actually painted on the mask. So if I press shift on the mask, I can actually turn the mask off press shift to bring the mask back. And if you wish to actually view the mask, you can hold down alt or option, and that will actually show you your mask. And you could of course actually paint on your mask in this view as well. Okay, uh, one last cool thing I wanna show you just here, smart object. And I've got up here dynamic blur as well. 
So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's add a layer. And let's do a little painting on this one here. So let's uh, let's drop the opacity down a bit. And again, let's just, just do some random thing just in here. Now, um, let's say we were fairly happy with that. We were like, oh man, it's a little bit too big or I, I should have blurred it a little bit more. What you can do is right mouse click on that, convert to smart object. Now, what you've actually done is you've protected those pixels that you've just painted inside of this thing called a smart object. So now if I put it into free transform, I can size this down or size it up as many times as I like, and I won't actually harm the pixels. And what's also great is if we go and do something like filter uh, blur Gaussian blur, if we apply a blur to that, it's actually getting applied dynamically. So uh, here's our smart object. Here is our Gaussian blur. We can turn that blur off or on at any point. And also the act of double clicking on the phrase there, Gaussian blur, will bring up that dialog box and we could actually change that number if we wished. So that's it there guys. I hope that wasn't too convoluted and I know that was very rushed. I just wanted to give you some tips on how to non-destructively create those um, displacement maps and um, I'm keen to see what you guys build inside of After Effects animating your static graphics. Alrighty, good luck everybody. Catch you later.